What's up divas and what's up divos? It's your girl April. So you already know what time it is. It's Wednesday, so it is Real Talk Wednesdays. And of course I am back with one of my favorite t-shirts on. I love this outfit. It's a yoga outfit and especially if I'm running around like I went grocery shopping with my eldest daughter today and my grandson and that's about it but I like to be really really comfortable sometimes so I have a pair of flip-flops and in case that you're wondering about the hair this is still the NubianBar.com's kinky straight color number 10 hair but I flat ironed it to do my final review so you girls can see what it looks flat ironed so it does get really sleek it does take a minute to flat iron because it is kinky straight hair so it does take a minute like you have to have some patience for any type of kinky straight hair but once you wash it it goes back to its natural kinky look so I will be washing it tonight because I wanted to go back to that I like it more or less kinky um, because it's just fuller and it just looks more natural and I just love the color like the color is just like amazing so I did put in a corn roll just for today because like I said I was running all over the place and I didn't want to be hot so other than that, I hope you girls had a wonderful Mother's Day. Me and my three daughters, uh, we went to the Phoenix Zoo. I was about to say the Bronx Zoo. We went to the Phoenix Zoo. That was the first time we went to the Phoenix Zoo, and it was really, really nice. Last time, uh, two years ago for Mother's Day, we went to the um, Wildlife and Aquarium Zoo, which was really corny. It was like a bunch of birds and dirt. There weren't even no elephants. How are you going to have elephants at the zoo and tigers? So, yeah. But this one was really, really nice. We had a great time. We didn't really walk the entire zoo because it's kind of big. And it was kind of hot. So, But we had a great time. And my grandson went along too. My middle child, which is my son who's 17, he didn't want to go. He don't really do this to zoo thing. And plus, he was getting ready to leave. He's about to leave tomorrow. Um, well, it's, well, today, when Wednesday, yeah, to go to New York, back to New York to, to hang out with my oldest son um, for two weeks. So, he just wanted to hang out with his friends. And I could totally understand that. You know, boys are really not into the zoo thing, especially at that age. But other than that, um, really nothing going on. I have some new videos coming out. And also, I did do a rant video for VIP Beauty Hair on Ally Express because the closure melted. Um, and as far as that, the closure melted. And I was not happy at all with that. They did not communicate with me until the video was published. And basically was calling me at 7.45 in the morning, my time, and 8 o'clock in the morning. And I had to, like, scream on them. Like, basically, I ended up cursing them out because they called prior the day before today. And my boyfriend told them, listen, she's not here. They call it my cell phone. But anyway, she's not here, and I'll give her the message. They explained the whole thing to him. He already knew about it. And then they called. They sent several emails, and I didn't respond to them. Well, I did respond to one, and I said no. I would not take the video down. Um, then um, they called me again this morning at 7.45 a.m., and I answered it and cussed her out. Like, you're going to wake me up out of my damn sleep about some damn closure. So, other, um, then then um, they kept emailing me, and then they called me back again late in the afternoon. And the young lady who sent me the hair, she was very distraught and upset. And I said, listen, we can work something out, but I need to make sure that this is going to be proper, basically, because I'm not going to have... I'm not going to do a new closure, and it's a good closure for me, and then for your patrons, you have bad closures. So basically, what they did was they walked me through a Skype video. We did Skype, actually, and it was really weird, but it was very interesting. Um, through their hair warehouse, you know, their, their place, and um, a lot of their closures, they had, like, a, quite a huge bad batch of closures. So... They didn't know, they didn't understand what was going on, and this is, this didn't come from them, it came from who they get the closures from. So, I let them know I needed to see the quality on camera, and they tested about five closures for me with the heat on it, which they actually worked out really, really good on, like, really, really high heat, which I was really happy about and impressed, and I let them know, you know, well, I will put the video on private until I get the closure and I test it out myself. And we will go from there. So it was like this big thing back and forth, back and forth. And I felt kind of good about it because 
the video wasn't meant to harm anybody but it was to let people know or basically the company know this is not how you do people regardless if they are YouTube gurus or patrons you don't do people like that you know what I mean you have to have good quality service all around the border and sometimes it sucks that you have to go out like the way that I did to make another person understand that it's not right so I did also inform them if anyone that watches my video purchase hair from them and it's not of good quality then I need to let them know and they need to fix the problem problem the hair bundles was perfect there was no issue with the hair bundles it was great hair it passed the bleach strand test because I just cut up a snippet of it and I did a strand test on it because I wanted to make sure there was virgin but the closure melted and it was something with the fibers in the closure the lace closure that it was melting so they fixed that and I was really happy about that and I was just still happy because I got my point across and the problem was fixed and I hope that from now on they take what people do in response very important because I'm not a customer but I'm someone who can help you bring customers and I feel like what I say to people you know it's not golden but I just want me I want to make sure that it's my words are trustworthy you know what I'm saying so I put the video in private so they can fix their problem and we shall see how it goes from there but she I felt so bad for her you know I don't normally feel bad for people when they do me dirty but I felt really bad because she was all in tears and they actually did email me back when I said in the video that I never got a response I did get a response but it wasn't from that particular person who was emailing me all along it was from the strange email which was one of their partners and I would have never known so they had attached the email that was sent to me from someone else to the email from the girl that was, you know, me and her was, you know, communicating. So they did communicate with me. Unfortunately, they should have addressed me with the direct email and not some weird looking email. You know what I'm saying? It went to my spam and I never opened it because that's just what I do. I'm not going to open something if it looks like spam. And other than that, the closure shouldn't have been melting in the first damn place. That's my bottom line. So I'm more than happy to help them fix their issue because. There are a lot of people that like to buy affordable hair, but I'm not going to be nobody's damn guinea pig. But we shall see how that goes. So anyway, if you need a Real Talk video about yourself or life situations of anyone you know, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line Real Talk, and as well as make sure that you change the name of your characters in the email and make sure to mention that. So that way that I know that you change them and I don't have to go about... Um, my, I'll go out of my way trying to change them and other than that I don't really think there's really too much to talk about um, I do have some new hair that I'm going to be reviewing a kinky curly wig by comingby.com which is a really nice wig I'm going to wash it tonight because I want to give it that natural look I hate that package look and also from this extravagant Oh, exquisite company that I will be sharing with you girls soon and I did two, I did two synthetic wigs one was by Free Trust Equal, this half wig. Oh my God. It's going to be kind of like a rant video for that. Because as soon as you touch the damn hair, it like tangled up like nobody's business. Like seriously. So I will be putting that up this week. And I did another one which was by, um, I think it was by Free Trust also. Which was their bubble wand curl. Which was okay. I really was like, um. It, it reminded me of another wig that I just did by Sensational. So I wasn't like excited about it because it was just like the same damn thing. Pictures are very deceiving on the internet when you look at the wig. So I, if I would have knew it was the same wig style, I would have never have ever requested that one. But it's neither here nor there. It's done and it's done. So I will get that posted. But yeah, so other than that, let's get into this real talk before I run out of memory card. Okay. pretty long hey lady I've been watching your channel for just a few short weeks and I love it partly because you have no filter and you remind me of myself okay here it is my mother Sherry and I have had an off and on relationship for years now I'm her only child and really don't understand why she has mistreated me however I always forgive her because I want that mother-daughter relationship so badly 
I'm in my late 30s and have two children, one of which is about to graduate from high school with honors and going to college. Her name is Skye. Skye reached out to Sherry and asked her to attend her graduation this coming June. Needless to say, my mother Sherry, being the person that she is, told my baby after thinking about it, she and her husband Robert, the only grandfather Skye knows, have decided not to attend. Then to add insult to injury, Sherry, my mother, asked Skye if there was anything else. As if my baby was bothering her. Okay, so I know how nasty my mother is, but her husband Robert is not. He's been in my child's children's lives since they were born. Oh, and did I tell you my mother lives less than two minutes away? So it's not uncommon to see her and Robin on any given day. So my six-year-old, my 16-year-old son, Neil, saw his grandfather, Robert, and asked, asked him why he wouldn't be coming to Sky's graduation. Robert replied, I didn't say that. Who told you that? Neil told him the story in detail. Needless to say, Robert was pissed and asked if the invitation was still available. Okay, here's my question. I know if mail, if, I, excuse me, I know if I mail the invite, there is a chance my mother will not give it to Robert, her husband. So should I take it over to him? Second, my daughter is very hurt. My mother isn't coming. My, my daughter is very hurt that my mother, her grandmother, is not coming to her graduation. My mother's mother will be there. Sky's great grandmother, grandmother from her father's side, and my mother's husband, as well as a host of others. And my mother, Sherry, is the only missing piece. What type of grandmother does that? Do whatever you want to me, but mess with my children and reserve the right to act the fuck up. I feel some type of way. Please give me some wisdom to share with Sky. Thanks. Wow. So we're just going to call her um, Brie. So Bree has two children, and one of them is graduating from high school and going on to college with honors, okay? And Bree and her mother, Sherry, live basically in the same neighborhood, two minutes away from one another. They have had an on and off mother and daughter relationship all her life, and she always forgives her mother because she wants to have a strong mother and daughter relationship. And also, she is the only child. Well... Bree invited her mother to her daughter's graduation, and Bree's mother, Sherry, declined the invite and also declined it for her husband, which he had no idea he was invited until Bree's other child, Neil, the boy, seen his grandfather and told him and asked him, basically, why wasn't he coming to his granddaughter's graduation? He had no idea about the situation and was the invite still open so he wants to come but Bree's mother does not want to come and see her grandchild graduate her only grandchild mind you okay well not her only but she has two but either way either here nor there so the grandfather wants to come and Bree wants to know should she bring the invitation over to him or should she in, should she mail it because she feels that if she mails it, it's going to somehow get lost and he's not going to know about the invitation. The whole damn family is coming to the graduation except for the grandmother. What type of shit is that? Like, you know something, Bree? I'm going to tell you something. As much as I love my mom, I love her to pieces because that's my mother. And we have gone through so many things in life, me and her. I don't really know if it's a thing with mother and daughter. I'm not like that with my daughter, Tati. There was a time when we didn't get along, but she was much younger. And that's because she was acting up in school. And I just wasn't having it. So it wasn't that we wasn't getting along. You know, I just was very strict in my rules, and this is what you're going to do. But as for me and my mom, we, I don't really understand our relationship either. You know, I have five children and two grandchildren. And my mother, she, like I said in the prior video, she does not know my kids' date of births. So she doesn't know when their birthdays are, which is really no big thing because nobody has to buy my kids anything for their birthday. However, you know, it's still things like she knows the oldest one, my eldest son's birthday and his phone number and she always calls and checks on him she'll always send him things but when it comes to my other four children they are like non-existence to her or she'll text me like she did a year ago asking me to please text her the kids names and birth dates so that she can make sure she puts them on her calendar and i had mentioned that to my boyfriend like you know she asked me to text 
her, the grandkids, names and birthdays. Now, mind you, my mother has no mental illnesses, meaning she doesn't have dementia, she doesn't have Alzheimer's, she doesn't have amnesia, so she should remember her grandkids' name. And my boyfriend was like, you know, go ahead, you should. I'm like, I'm not gonna, I'm not texting her that. Because for what? Those are your grandkids. You should know their name. But she does little things that really kind of like piss me off too, especially with my kids. Like you don't treat your grandkids like that. It's one thing to treat me like that because we have been at it for years. One minute we speak, the next minute we don't. We don't. We speak to each other now, but not like we used to. You know what I mean? Like I have to call her, and when I do call her, she's either sleeping or too busy, and she'll give me like a few minutes. She'll tell me about her day, and then when it's my turn to just, you know, tell her what's going on in my life or her grandkids' life, she's too busy. She wants to get off the phone. Um, and I'm going to give you a prime example on Mother's Day. She texted me, and she just was like, thanks for the card. I like it. Happy Mother's Day. And I texted her back, You're, I'm glad you like it. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, too. I love you. Not even I love you, too. I love you. Because she didn't tell me she loved me. Then I decided to give her a call. Five minutes later, I called her. She was laying down, but she gave me some com um, conversation. Um, she said, well, how was your day? You know, and I told her, I said, me and the girls, we went to the zoo. Oh, that's nice. And I said, and Tinky, Tinky Man did too. Tinky Man? Who's Tinky? I said, that's my grandson. Mm. So how are the kids? They're doing great. Mm. Well, my brother called me and asked me to borrow some money. This was her telling me. So when you ask me how my children are, and I'm relating to your conversation, and I'm giving you a response, mm, that's all you can say? Whatever. I kind of took offense to that, and I really didn't want to talk after that. I let her speak her piece about her brother or whatnot, and I basically told her, you know what, I'm tired. I've been out all day. I'm going to go take a nap. Got off the phone and called my stepmom because it was Mother's Day for her too. And I had a great conversation with her. I had already spoken to my dad earlier that day. He called me. He wanted to talk to me and he wanted to talk to his grandkids. So it's like a totally different relationship. So unfortunately, Bree, as bad as you want a great mother and daughter relationship, because trust me, I know how you feel. I'm not the only child to my mother. She has another daughter who's 12 years younger than me who lives with her. But... She seemed to have treated her way better than she's always treated me, which is fine. You know what I'm saying? If you want to single out, single out certain kids, then you do that. Regardless of how your kid may act in life, you don't really single them out. But either here nor there, um, as bad as you want a relationship with your mother, she has to be a part of it. Like, it takes two people. Just like the phone works both ways, the relationship works both ways, whether it's mother or daughter. And it's kind of fucked up that she don't want to attend her granddaughters, her only granddaughters, high school graduation with honors and going to college. Like, you don't see a lot of these young people out here graduating with honors and going to college. And when they do, you are supposed to praise them. Like, be inspired by them let them know that they are an inspiring young person and give them motivation and encouragement but you cannot attend a graduation that probably won't take up too much of your time i would say at the most two hours of your time like what else can she possibly fucking do but sit at home and do nothing and then decline an invite how could you tell your own grandchild that, no, I'm not coming to your graduation? That is so selfish and hateful. But you know what? With those type of people, there's really not much you can do for them but allow them to stew in their own hateful ass juices. Because no matter what you do, if you go out your fucking way to try to please them, you go out your way to try to make it a great relationship, it ain't going to work. Trust me. I've been done it done did that already several attempts and i'm at my wits end i don't even bother anymore and needless to say unfortunately you know we only have one parent but i'm not going to constantly be the one always reaching out to you you know what i'm saying why don't you reach out to me sometimes why don't you call and say hey let me speak to my grandkids is it that hard to do you know what i'm saying and a part of me wants to just give her a piece of my mind and let her know how that makes me feel. And not only me, but my children. My four children, not my eldest one, because he knows my mother loves him. But my four other kids, they always constantly say to me, I don't think grandma likes us. I don't think grandma likes us. She doesn't even call us on holidays. She doesn't call us for our birthdays. She doesn't, she doesn't talk to us on the phone. I don't think she likes us. And 
she doesn't even know our names. And that's fucked up for your kids to say, you know what I'm saying, about your mother. And it's it's so pathetic and sad and unfortunate because it's a family. You're supposed to be a family. And this is how you treat your family like we some strangers in the street, like some hobos that you don't even fucking know. You know what I'm saying? Like we some foreign ass people that came from the fucking sky and you treating us like you don't even know us. And you know what? It's about time that I said something to her because it's not right for my kids to go through this. And it's not right for me to have to constantly be saying something to you guys about it on YouTube. I need to say what I have to say to her. And if she can't respect it, then what else? I'm not going to be disrespectful to my mom. I would never be disrespectful to her. However, there's a point in a time in a person's life like, hey, you're kind of being disrespectful to me and my kids because you show us no lack of consideration. You don't care. My kids feel like you don't care. And what type of relationship is that? When my mom's father was alive, he was my grandfather. And we were close like this. And she seen the relationship that he and I had. Why don't you do the same for your kids, your grandchildren? You have five beautiful grandchildren and two great grandchildren. Act like it. You know what I'm saying? As much as me and my eldest son don't get along, I've spoken to him today on the phone. You know what I mean? Because my son, my other son, my middle son is going down there to spend a couple of weeks with him. He may get on my last nerves, and he does do some disrespectful shit to me, but he's still going to be my child, and I am still love him. And regardless of how he may act, I'm not going to take it out on his son. Even though I have said in past videos that his son is a little bit rambunctious and bad, and I can't tolerate that. I can't. I cannot tolerate just wild, bad children at the age of two. I just freaking can't, and that's just me. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to disown my grandchild. Because that's my grandson, and that's not his fault that he acts like that. That's how your parents raised you. And it's not your fault that your father acts like that, because that's just how he is. You know what I'm saying? But, Bree, if she don't want to come to your daughter's graduation, then so be it. Because she's going to be the one that's going to be sitting at home, stewing in her own juices. Because you know what? When your stepfather or her husband goes and attends this family event, she's going to be the one left out. And she's going to be the one talked about. Because you best believe everybody in there is going to be like, well, where's Sherry? Why Sherry ain't come? You know everybody's going to ask about her. I wouldn't mail the invitation. I would take his invitation right over there to him. And if she don't, if she answers the door and says that he's not home, then you know what you do? You wait until he's there and you give it to him personally. Don't hand it to her. If you know his phone number, I would give him a call and let him know, hey, I'm on my way with your invitation. I'd like to drop it off to you. You know what I'm saying? There's really not much you can say to your daughter, but let her know, you know what? I've tried and I've reached out to your grandmother on several attempts, and I've tried to make our relationship work. She's just set in her ways, and this is the type of person she is. And unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about it. However, your grandfather is coming, and he's proud of you, proud of you, and we all are proud of you. And you can never let anybody, anyone, Fuck up your day. Fuck up your vibe. I, I don't let anybody fuck up my day. You may fuck it up for a few minutes, but then I jump to my senses and be like, you know what? You is not about to sit here and ruin my day and my good vibe. Not with your bullshit ass dumb shit going on. Not today. Regardless, if it was just you, Bree, and your son that showed up to her graduation, let that girl know that she has achieved so much in life and she don't need nobody there that don't want to be there against their will, celebrating in her achievements. If her grandmother don't want to be there, there's no need to force or make her come. You know what I'm saying? Because that means you just came on a sour note. You really don't want to be there. And I wouldn't want nobody around in my achievements that don't want to be around. I don't need no fake friends. I don't need no fake family. I don't need no fake nothing. If you can't come as your true self and with your true feelings, the motherfucker don't come at all, and you can miss out on the shit. Everybody going to need somebody a day in their life, regardless of how you may feel. You may hate this person, but one day they may need you or you may need them. Either here nor there, we all going to need somebody in our life. And I don't mean in a relationship-wise as in a man and a woman, but we all, we all need help regardless. And one day your mother is going to need you. You know what I'm saying? And then she's going to look back on all her mischievous ways and she's going to realize how she fucked up.
Some women don't know how to be parents. Some women don't know how to be a mother. You know what I'm saying? Some women just don't have that emotional inside of them to be able to open up and, you know what I'm saying, make their daughter feel as a person or as a whole or loved or a daughter. Some people don't do have that. And unfortunately, I really feel like my mother is one of those type of people. She really don't have that in her to show me that type of love. And I'm pretty sure she does love me because that's my mom. Why wouldn't you love me? But she has said so many things in her past to me as a teenager, like, you know, really hurtful things that I'm not even going to get into. But it's just that some women just don't have it in them to be nurturing like that as a parent. And if you want to sit on your hot horse and don't want to come to your grandbaby's graduation and celebrate it with her achievement, then fuck you. Fuck out of here. And just like you said, don't take that shit out on my kid. But you know what, Brie? Don't get out of character for your mother because that's just going to be one thing she's going to hold over your head because you got out of character with her. If she don't want to come, fuck her. She ain't got to come. What you need her there for? You don't need no fake-ass people at your daughter's achievements. You don't need no fake-ass friends, no fake-ass family, no fake-ass mother at your daughter or your son's achievements. If she don't want to come, let her sit her ass at home. Do you really think that Robert, your stepfather, is going to let her sit there without him saying anything to her? She may not come, you know what I'm saying? But you best believe that man is going to have his word to her about it. He's going to have his say. And whether she feel good or bad about it, you'll never know. But either here nor there, your daughter is going to have a wonderful achievement. She got her whole entire other portion of her family coming, which is grand and great. And that's all she need. True love. You don't need no fake ass love nowhere. True love. So you let her know you have achieved so much in life. And this is just one hurdle that you need to achieve. And unfortunately, your grandmother, she don't want to come around like that. And you cannot force nobody to come around. You don't need any fake friends or fake family around you. As long as you continue on and you move forward, you always will know that I'm behind you, your step-grandfather's behind you, and the rest of your family members are behind you. And that's all you need. And if they ain't behind you, just know that you can stand on your own two feet and be behind your own self and handle your shit and hold your shit down. Family be the ones. You know what I'm saying? It be really hard when it's your own parents, especially if it's your mom. But she about to graduate, and that's the achievement of a lifetime. I wish I would have graduated from high school with honors. I wish I would have graduated from high school in general. I mean, I got a GED, but I really wish I would have graduated from high school. But let Bree know what you girls would do in the situation. But honestly, I would go over there, and I would hand-deliver him the invitation. What's your mother going to do? Take it from him? He already know when it is, so... If she don't want to fucking go, she ain't got to go. Personally, if it were me, I wouldn't even want her fucking ass there, honestly. Why allow her to bask in the achievement of your daughter when she don't even acknowledge her like that? You know what I'm saying? Why allow her to be part of the celebration when she don't even acknowledge your kids like that? I mean, that may say, sound selfish on my part, but me personally, I'm not about to allow you to come over and bask in the celebration if you ain't even acknowledging my kids like that that's just another form of being fake and i'm not about to be fake or right along with you so on to the next one this one is long she said it may end up being a little long that bitch lied this shit is not a little long hi april my name is tara fake name and something has been on my mind for a long while i am going to try to make this short the story short but it may end up being a little long did she say a little long? Okay. I used to have a friend, Katie, in late high school. I became friends with her through a family friend of mine. When she came to my college, I offered to mentor her and even introduced her to my group of friends because I wanted her to get comfortable and not feel the same pressures of first year college the same way I did. She hung out with my group and I just came out as, excuse me, as she came, as she hung out with my group. And I just came out of an emotionally abusive and toxic relationship. I began to fall in love with a boy named Paul, my current boyfriend, fake name. And she began to have a crush on another guy in our group of friends named Mark. I eventually started dating Paul. And both me and Paul always took her out with us and our friends for coffees. Always made sure to hang out with her. And she still continued to have a crush on Mark. 
In the summer, she left the country, and Mark ended up getting a girlfriend. He was never interested in Katie from the start, and when Katie found out he had gotten a girlfriend, she was very bitter and upset at him. When she came back after the summer, she began to act very bitter towards everyone in the group. I sensed a lot of negative vibes that even my boyfriend noticed, and we just felt like things were not Gucci. Well, eventually she became bitter towards me and started telling me that my life was perfect. Far from it, as I just started to be in a happy relationship from my old toxic and abusive one. And that I had the perfect boyfriend, etc., etc. I would always tell her my life was far from perfect and that my boyfriend is not the prime of a perfect life as wonderful as he is. As my life started getting busy from exams, she began to tell me she didn't want to hang out with me and my boyfriend anymore because she didn't feel comfortable because she wasn't in a relationship. This was not a deal of third wheeling because it wasn't just me and my boyfriend, but the other friends from the group as well. I told her it's fair that she doesn't want to hang out with us if she no longer is comfortable. And that was that. A week later, she sent me a long paragraph text about how I was a horrible friend for not hanging out with her anymore and how she knows I came from an abusive relationship and that although she was happy for me, she feels left out. Surprised at this response as I respected her decision to no longer hang out with me, I had no idea what to do from there. I simply explained that it was her distancing, distancing, distancing herself from us and myself and that I am only respecting what she wants. If she wants to hang out with me, she is free to do so, and I'll be happy to do that. Since then, she began to go around talking shit about me to all our mutual friends. She told them that I am as ugly and, and I shouldn't be a... Whoa. She told them that I am ass ugly and I shouldn't be a model. I had won a modeling competition that summer and that I don't deserve anything perfect in my life. I ignored that message. I still talked to her from time to time, but I was still aware of what she was doing. And then she began to go to my family friends and brag to them about how my life is so perfect and how, again, I get everything I want. This became very discomforting as my life was far from that and she portrayed me to be what I am not. So then I began to cut things off with her slowly. She still continued to talk about me and talk shit about my boyfriend on how we made her feel left out and that we, th we treated her horribly even though me and my boyfriend did all we could to include her in all of our friend group activities when she was trying to separate herself. Eventually I got tired of hearing it and cut her off completely, including social media. A whole year later she messaged me asking to meet up and talk about everything. She told me to meet her at 8 a.m. at a coffee shop, and I agreed, being the too nice person I am. She stood me up. It wasn't until 8.30 that I texted her and asked her where she was, and she then told me she can't make it. I was angry. I couldn't believe it. She asked to reschedule. I said, sure. However, this time, I was going to wait and see if she would message me and ask me where I was and whether I was showing up. She did not. So again, I wasted my time sitting at the coffee shop alone, waiting for this loser who is a terrible friend who did not show any remorse for the fact that this was the second time she stood me up. But April, I was a bigger person, and I did not message her about it. I stood my ground. A week later, she messaged me and says, I think we should meet up this week since it didn't happen last week. I kindly told her, listen, all these issues happened a year ago. I tried to meet up with you a year, and after that, it has not happened. I am over the problems we have. I wish you the best in your life, and it, and I ended it respectfully, respectively, and I ended it respectfully like that. Fast forward. She is still talking about me. Her best friend gives me dirty looks when she sees me, and Katie will give me cut eye in the hallways of college. I need to be sure that I did the right thing. I am so anxious about this still, and it is very unsettling. I hate that everyone in college looks at me in a different light just because I refuse to go around telling my side of the story. What do I do? Do I leave it completely alone, waiting for it to blow over? Did I do the right thing? So, hmm. So it wasn't that long. Tara and her friend Katie ain't friends no more because Katie's basically a hater. So, first of all, here's the thing. Katie told... Tara has a boyfriend. She got out of a bad relationship. She invited Katie into her group of friends so she could feel comfortable in her first year of college because she didn't want her to feel the same way that she did when she entered the school. 
that's totally respectable. And I would appreciate if somebody was to do that for me too. Because when you go into these new places, you have no friends. You don't know where is where, what's what. So you feel a little bit overwhelmed and a little bit anxious. And it gets to be stressful. So you got someone welcoming you into their group. So that way you can be comfortable. You got somebody to hang out with. You can have friends, coffee, tea, whatever the fuck you want to do. She also started liking the boy. Katie started liking the boy. However, the boy did not like her fucking ass. So she started taking it out on everybody else. She wants to exclude herself from the group and told um, Tara, I don't think we should hang out anymore. I don't feel comfortable. And then like a week later, you're texting me telling me why you don't hang out with me no more. You don't like to include me in everything. You don't want to hang out with me. Fuck is wrong with you, bitch. You just texted me like a week ago talking about you don't want to hang out with me anymore because you felt uncomfortable because you were in a relationship and you didn't want to be hanging out with me and my boyfriend because you weren't in a relationship. So basically you felt like a third wheel, even though you didn't say that, but that's what the fuck it felt like. But you want to text somebody and tell them that you don't want to hang out with them and you don't feel comfortable hanging out with them because you're not in a relationship. But then you go and text them a week later talking about, oh, you never hang out with me no more. Bitch, did you just realize what the fuck you texted me last week? Do you have amnesia? She sound a little weird, a little weirdo, a little offlandish. She seemed a little sketchy, a little cuckoo in the motherfucking head is how she sound. With that type of person, now you good. Because first of all, she going around, she talking shit about you. She talking dirt, rolling her eyes and all of this shit. Like, bitches, please, this is 2016. Who go the fuck around rolling their eyes at anybody anymore? How old are we? I mean, that shit should be so played out. And if you're rolling your eyes at somebody and it ain't played out, you got to be like six and seven and eight to be rolling your eyes. Grown-ass women and women in college do not go around rolling their fucking eyes at people. Like, get the fuck out of here with that shit. You want to cut your eyes at me while I'm walking through the hallway or on campus at school? You look real fucking stupid. But however, I have had bitches roll their eyes at me in the stores. And you know what I do? I walk by and I just be like, mm <laughs> and smile and keep it moving. Sometimes I will fly my flap my hair over. That's what I do to bitches that roll their eyes or give me that side look, cut their eyes at me. Cause you only looking. Thanks for looking, okay? Thank you. Thank you for looking. But you only cutting your motherfucking eyes at me because you got a problem. You hateful ass bitch. Okay? Hate last bitches. That's why I tell y'all I don't have no friends but the one friend and my daughter because bitches is hateful and they put they just be so hateful. You don't even know a motherfucker. You just mad because their hair is laid or they got some nice ass fucking flip flops from the dollar store on. B bitch, please go sit down. So now you got her friends rolling and cutting their eyes. You got everybody on campus in your business. You don't have to tell nobody your business, Tara. Okay, because first of all, you in school to learn. You ain't there for fucking social gossip. This ain't the Wendy fucking Williams show gossiping about what you doing and what your life is like. If this bitch want to feel like your life is golden, then let her continue to think that way. She seemed like that fucking crazy bitch from single white female who wanted to be just like the other one because she felt like her life was so better. She had a better relationship. She had a better job. She dressed better. She looked better. She worked better. Everything she was jealous of. So that's what she's starting to sound like with me. Single white female. And she want to be just like you. Okay. If she's going around telling everybody how good your motherfucking life is. Then obviously she's feeling some type of way. And she's jealous of you. Now here's the thing. If you tell me you want to meet me. And you don't meet me the first time. You tell me you forgot. Or you were busy. Or whatever the case may be. Bitch you better hope that I meet with you the next time. I'm not going to meet up with you. You're going to either have to come to me. Or else we're not going to meet up. we either going to have to talk on the phone or whatever. However, with a type of person like that, you don't really have to meet up with her anymore. You don't really have to talk about what happened in the past year. There's really nothing to talk about. Because for one, regardless of what you say to this bitch, if you sit down and have coffee and tea with her and you talk about the issue at hand that y'all two had, she's never going to admit to the fact that she's running around telling your fucking dirt, your dirty laundry. She's not going to admit to that. So you're going to be sitting there wasting your breath, having a conversation with a fucking liar who's lying about everything and all she's worried about how is how she feels she really doesn't give a fuck about how you feel honestly don't bother wasting your time having coffee with her or meeting up with her to have coffee with her it's a waste of time because just like i said <clears throat> you guys are going to sit there and talk and chit chat about certain shit 
And what are you going to say? Oh, Katie, I heard you were talking about me. You were telling my business and you were talking to my family and friends about me. And what is she going to say? No, I wasn't, Tara. I wasn't saying that. Why would I say that? I don't have no... Please, people be lying. And then you're going to go back and forth with her. And in your mind, Tara, you're going to be sitting there like this fucking greasy bitch. She know what the fuck she said. So why even bother going into the situation? Some people are left well the fuck alone. And I have had several friends like that who I'm not even going to sit on the phone and discuss it with you. Because regardless of the fact, I know you're going to lie and say you didn't throw shade on me on social media. You're going to lie and say, oh, it wasn't for you. It wasn't meant for you. I know you're going to lie and say this. So you know what I do is best? I'm not even going to fucking respond to your text messages because it's a waste of my time. And if I say something to you and are you lying to me, then you're going to make me come out of character and I'm going to spaz the fuck off on you. So it's really not worth it and you're really not worth my time. What I do for these type of people is I leave them the fuck alone and I say nothing else to them again in life because they're not worth my time, hard work, or effort. I don't bother with people like that. There are too many fucking people out there in the world that could be your real friend instead of worrying about mending fake ass friendships with other people. You know what I'm saying? There's too many other people in the world that could be beneficial as friends to you. And when I say beneficial, not as being using them, but meaning they could be your friend and mean really be your friend, which is a whole lot more. It means a whole lot here. You know what I'm saying? I don't need no fake-ass friends. I don't need to mend any fake-ass relationships. I've had friendships, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of those friendships I've thrown out the door because I already know the deal. You're not going to admit to me of saying, oh, yeah, April, I was talking about you on social media. Oh, yeah, I was talking about you. You're not going to say that. You're, you're going to go around the corner with it, and you're going to kick it off or block it off as it was meant for something else. But I'm not fucking stupid, and you're not fucking stupid. And with those type of people... There's really no reason to try to compromise with them and mend shit. Because as long as they continue to fucking lie, your whole friendship is going to be nothing but one big fucking lie. And why even bother? Some fucking females, some niggas, is not worth having as friends. There's a whole lot of other people out here in the world that could be your friends. Why bother trying to mend something with somebody who ain't even on your fucking caliber? You know what I'm saying? I still see shade being thrown. Okay, on social media, but I'm a I'm the bigger person because you know why? If I don't be, I could get real fucking dirty and grimy up in this motherfucker, regardless social media, YouTube or whatever, and I'll be on some real grimy shit and be fucking just as shady. It won't even be shade. It'll be a fucking black cloud, okay, over the motherfucking sky. I ain't even gonna call my shit shade. So with people like that, I ignore them because you know why? Bitch, if you ain't got nothing better to do but constantly talk about me, throw shade, or talk about what the fuck I'm doing, if my life is just so much better, if all oh, my boyfriend's life is is this so much better going to my family and friends and my my friendship group on college campus and you just constantly talking shit about me? Then continue to talk shit about me because that just tells me one thing. I'm constantly on your fucking mind and obviously you want to be like me or there's something about me that you really like but you can't have it or you can't get there in life, okay? Or you just ain't got what the fuck it takes, okay? So with those type of females... I leave them high and dry. I ain't got to explain to you why we ain't friends no more. I ain't got to explain to you why I don't fucking talk to you no more. I don't have to explain to you why I don't text you or none of that shit or shout you the fuck out or none of that shit. I don't have to explain that shit because you know what? At the end of the day, I pay for all of this. Not you, bitch. And I really don't give a fuck about how you feel about me at the end of the day. If we were the best of friends for 25,000 years and you threw shade on me or went around campus talking about me or whatever, and I'm done with you, okay? There is no reason that friendships have to be like that, okay? And if you have a friend like that and you were friends, they start turning and just saying dumb shit and doing dumb shit, they're not your friend and they really not worth your time and effort. There's no reason to sit and have coffee and sit and chit-chat. The whole conversation from the get-go is going to be incorrect, a bunch of bullshit and a bunch of lies. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I strongly feel. That's why I guess I'm going to be just a loner for the rest of my life because 
I'm not going to allow somebody to just constantly disrespect me. Like, you know what I'm saying? She's disrespected you enough. You've done the right thing by texting her. You've been very dis you've been very respectable to her in the text message, as a matter of fact. A bitch like me would have cursed her ass the fuck out. But she was very respectable, Tara, to her in a text message. And if me, for one, I would just leave it alone at that and wait till it blows over. Here's the thing. If that bitch get in your face and say something about you to your face, then you can confront her. But don't go through campus looking for no trouble because you in school. Carry yourself better than that. If she wants to act like she's in kindergarten or grade school, then allow her to do that. She's got her little group of friends now, what have you, and she's happy about that. But in reality, her life is fucking miserable. So yes, you've done the right thing. And two, I wouldn't even worry about discussing any of my personal business with anybody on campus, friend or not. Your business is your business, and it's not to be put out there like this is some goddamn Wendy Williams talk show. So on that note, let Tara know how you feel about the situation and what your, suge your suggestions would be. It wasn't even that long. Okay, so this is the last one. First and foremost, April, let me start by letting you know that I love watching your videos. I really need some advice right now on a situation I'm going through with my boyfriend slash baby father. Him and I have been together for a total of eight years, and we have two beautiful children together. We've had our ups and downs, but have managed to but have managed to hold things together. I've dealt with him cheating, him doing prison and doing time in prison, and honestly, too much. Before he got out of prison over a year ago, he wanted to come live with the kids and I. I was against it at first because I felt like we had too much to work on and he had been gone for a year and a half and our children wouldn't be used to him being around like that. At the time, our kids were one and two years of age. Plus, my boyfriend has a bad temper and we've dealt with domestic violence in our relationship. So I didn't completely trust that we could make it work out. I just didn't want my babies to go through that. Always, I ended up, anyways, I ended up deciding to let him move in. I was hopeful that he would get a job and help with bills, but it never happened. I ended up moving out of my three-bedroom to a three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bathroom townhouse because the financial load was too much considering the fact that I'm now taking care of an extra person. We ended up moving into a two-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment in an area I just hate living in. My boyfriend did start working at a fast food restaurant, but quit because he wanted to focus on going back to school to get his cosmetology license. I was against this idea because although he had this part-time job, I felt like he could have still done both. I've been in school full-time and worked full-time, so I know it's possible. Although I was against him quitting his job, he decided to quit anyways. So I've pretty much been paying all the bills, taking care of everyone in the household with no help at all for a little over a year. And I'm honestly tired of taking care of a grown, able-bodied man. He barely cooks or cleans, and I'm tired of all the stress. I'm only 27 years old, and I'm now on high blood pressure medicine. I deal with his one friend coming over every day, using my boyfriend's phone to cheat on his girlfriend, which I find very disrespectful. At times, I don't even want to go home. I asked my boyfriend a few weeks ago about getting married, and he claims we weren't, or we weren't ready for that because we have too many problems, and we can't provide for his family at this time. As, as he can't provide for his family at this time. As I told him, pretty much acting as I told him, we're pretty much acting as if we're married. So why not just make it official? I felt as if he was saying, "I'm good enough to play house with, but not marry." April, please no. I'm not ready to marry this man. I just wanted to see where his mind was at. And if he was even thinking about a future with me and our children. Before I even asked him about us becoming married, I received a notice that my lease was ending soon. And I could either renew and, and the rent would increase by $25 or I could give a 30 days notice. I had already explained to my boyfriend that I might not renew the lease because we've had too many problems with this apartment from mold to broken cabinets. After I've had the conversation with him about marriage and him pretty much saying we weren't ready, it became clear to me that I shouldn't renew the lease and I deserve more and want more. That's what he's given me. Than what he's given me. After telling my boyfriend that I wasn't renewing the lease and was planning on moving back for a while to work on myself, he became very upset and said the real reason he doesn't want to marry me is because he feels as though I don't have his back. Which I don't understand considering the fact that I've had his back all this time. 
even while he was locked up. He also claims I don't have his back when it comes to my family because they don't like him and have no problem voicing that. They feel like he's just using me. Since then, I've started the process of packing my, my and my children's belongings, and he got even more upset and left with his friend and kept calling my phone to argue and said some very hurtful things to me. So I got extremely upset and let him know that I was tired of taking care of a grown man and I want more out of him than he's given. He claims I just want to move out of the apartment so I can party and do whatever I want. April, I'm not, I'm not the partying type. I just want him to do better towards me and our children and show me he's a man and not a little boy. Every time we talk now, he keeps telling me how I'm making it hard for him to finish school and with the fact that he's on probation. This weekend, I stay with my grandmother because I know he's getting, I know how, I know how he gets when things don't go his way. I want to get clothes. I went to get clothes last night for my apartment and his friend and his friend's girlfriend were sitting in my living room like everything was well and good. April, could you please give me your thoughts on my situation? I love him, but we can't keep doing the same things we've been doing. Am I wrong for wanting more? Am I doing the right thing by not renewing my lease and making him go back to his mother's? Please help. Wow. So she didn't put her name. So we just going to call her Kendra. So Kendra been with her boyfriend and baby father for eight years. They got two kids. This nigga done been in jail, cheated, blah, blah, blah. Came out of jail. Finally got a job working at a fast food restaurant part-time. Then he quit that because he felt like he couldn't do both. Go to school part-time and get a job part-time. When she has done both. Full-time job, full-time school. First of all, I'm going to just say this. Don't let no fucking man run your ass or your shit down in the ground. Here's the thing. I don't give a fuck how old you are. If you're a grown-ass man, you need to learn how to take care of yourself. It's one thing to be a helpful human being. If you're in a relationship, you're supposed to help one another and build each other up. But I'll be damned if I'm about to take care of some grown-ass man, okay? And I feel you on that, girlfriend. Yes, Kendra, you are definitely right. Why are you the one paying all the bills and doing everything in the fucking house while he's kicking it with his friends and going to school part-time and can't even fucking hold down a goddamn job and then want to have temper tantrums and shit? Let me tell you something, bitch. I would fucking pack my shit the fuck up and move the hell out, too. And, yeah, that might be your kid's father, but you know what? You ain't got to be bothered with that bullshit. You ain't got to have him living up in your house disturbing your peaceful ass fucking life mooching off of you and leeching off of you is not cool at all okay it's sad when you got a grown ass man that can't fend for themselves okay it's sad when you got a grown ass man that can't fend for themselves and you got kids with them and you holding down him the kids and the household like that shit is pathetic it's far from sad. It's fucking pathetic. Me, for one, I'm not saying I'm a stingy bitch, but I'm not taking care of no grown-ass man, and that's just how it is. I'm not taking care of a grown-ass man. I understand we all go through hard times, hard times in life. Who don't go through some hard times in life? You know what I'm saying? Even the rich go through some hard times in life. But you need to pull your own weight around this motherfucker and act like you know. We got two kids. You can't fucking get a part-time job. You can't work a part-time job and go to school. If you cannot focus and do both things, then your ass must be real fucking stupid. Now he's trying to blame you because you want to move out. He said you want to go party. You want to do this. You want to party. That's why you don't live with him all this. You know what, honey? Let him say whatever the fuck he want to say. As long as you know the real deal and you know the reason why... You are moving the fuck out and moving the fuck away from his ass. Then that's all that matters. I'm like you. I'm not about to let no man leech off of me and be the headache in my head and the stress in my fucking pain in my chest. Okay? I'm not about to let nobody have me taking no blood pressure medication because your dumb ass don't want to pull the weight. Like I said, it's pathetic when you got a grown-ass man that don't want to take care of himself or want to sit around and eat your shit up. And live off of your shit. You right. If I were you, I would move out too. And I would go back and move on my own. And let his ass go back to his mother. Because in reality, when you think about it, what are you? Is he one of your kids? 
you it seems like you being his mother by taking care of him and doing all of this shit for him like i said it's one thing in a relationship you have to help each other out you have to build each other up but if you're not pulling the weight that you're supposed to pull and you're not doing anything but take 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 in all the time then there's really no relationship okay and then you start to feel used and you start to feel like you know what this is too much. After a while, it just gets, the burden gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And then it feels like you're taking care of another child, okay? So why put yourself through, just why put yourself through that bullshit? Why push yourself through stress over anybody in any relationship, man or female? Why bother putting yourself through any type of situation that's stressful? You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to allow anybody to stress me out. I'm not going to allow anybody to use me. I'm not going to let anybody to mooch off me. I have my children that do that. That's what they're here for. You know what I mean? I'm not going to let a grown-ass man do that. And also, it becomes very unattractive, okay? I said that last week in a video. You know what I'm saying? When the young lady was like, she just got disgusted. And she just couldn't, just, she was just disgusted by him. That's a turn off. When you have someone in your life that you've been in a relationship with and then they, you look at them differently because you start to see that they're not really about shit. They're lazy. They don't have anything to bring to the table. You look at them and then that is like a total turn off. Like, whoa, you're really disgusting me. Like, I just can't. Like, the, And that's a total turn off. I don't really know about the rest of you females out there, but if you ain't providing and i don't need you to provide for me but provide for us as a team teamwork and you're more or less lazy and you're just basically living off of me that is very unattractive very 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 unattractive as a grown person i find that to be very unattractive some women don't care some women just are like well he laid a pipe down so it's all good please i don't give a fuck about no goddamn pipe all right that shit is Cute don't pay the bills. Being cute don't pay the fucking bills. Well, he cute. Cute don't pay the fucking bills, all right? And neither do the D. The dick don't pay the bills neither. I need you to contribute. I need you to be a man or a woman, whatever type of relationship you're in with the person, and pull your weight around this motherfucker. So, no, Kendra, you're not wrong. You should have been left a long time ago. And you know what? It's good to see the reason why he doesn't want to marry you. You wouldn't. When I read it and I kept reading it, and she, I was like, I know this bitch is not crazy. She wants to get married to him. Is she bugging the fuck out? But then when you said the reason why you said it to him, and you weren't serious. You just wanted to see what he was gonna say. I was just basically sitting here reading it like, phew. I wanted to go phew because I was about to flip out on you if you really had wanted to marry him. Now you know something. You may be good enough to play house with. Who gives a fuck? At least you have that to take with you and walk away and you don't have to worry about oh that's your husband now i'm married to this fucking low life scumbag now i gotta worry about how i'm gonna get divorced or anything like that you don't have to worry about that at least you were able to see that before y'all even got married to one another sometimes let me tell you marriage is not all it's sparked up or cracked up to be I, sometimes me personally i look at it as just a fucking piece of paper like a certificate that they give you in school for good grade attendance, I look at it as that, a piece of fucking paper. Because regardless, you got this piece of paper, does not mean that that person is going to act like a human fucking being because they're married to you. So in my world, after my divorce, it's like, why even bother? I'm not bothering with this shit again. No, I have time for it. But anyway, Kendra, you were totally right in your decisions, and I respect you for that. Had it been me, his ass would have been long gone. He would have been back to his mother's house a long time ago. A long time ago. If you can't hold down a part-time job and part-time school, nigga, then you need to do something with yourself. You're not in grade school. I'm not your mama. I don't have to take care of you. Let him fend for himself, okay? You got kids to worry about and to take care of. You move and find yourself a nice little apartment for you and your children and get your shit back on track and get it together. And don't let him coerce you into moving back in. Because niggas are real swift sometimes with the tongue and they be trying to fucking smooth talk their way back into your life with the bullshit. And everything will be gravy for the first couple of weeks. Then they turn around and they go back to their same old fucking trifling ass ways. You know what I'm talking about. So leave his ass the fuck alone. Let him continue on with his little high school education. And you continue on with your life. 
Don't let anybody bring your spirits down and don't let anybody bring you down in general. You got too much to lose. This nigga talking about, oh, he on probation and shit like that. Leave him the fuck alone. Anyway, yes, girls. Let Kendra know what you would do in this situation. Me personally, I just think like it's very unattractive when you have someone that lives with you and they're just really not pulling the weight. Like it's very unattractive. But anyway, so yes, leave your comments below and you girls already know what time it is. I did three today. They were long, so I did three and I hope you girls don't mind that this video is over 45 minutes. So, you know, it is what it is. And so on that note, stay diva and divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you girls and guys on my next video.